Hello and welcome to The Mythic Quill. My name is Jerry LeClaire. I'm an independent author and publisher, editor, and educator. I created this YouTube channel for people like me, so people who love stories. I will be giving some writing and publishing tips and advice. I'll be reviewing and analyzing books and movies. Um, I'll be doing some readings, and I'm also hoping to bring in other independent authors and maybe some editors for interviews or just to share some advice they have for new and aspiring authors. For today's episode, I want to talk about the basics of traditional publishing, assisted self-publishing, and self-publishing. That's a lot to cover in one video though, so I'm going to split it up into two, and today I'm going to focus on traditional publishing. Now, a lot of new authors ask what the best type of publishing is for them. The short answer is it depends on your goals and how much time and money you have to invest. Because the big differences between the three types of publishing boil down to the cost to the author, royalties, and time. Now, there are a lot of steps involved in publishing a book. For example, there's editing, and there's many levels of editing, and usually many rounds of editing. There's interior formatting and design. There's cover design and layout. Um, there's acquiring ISBNs, uh, printing and distribution. So there are a lot of steps in there. It may seem to some like putting the cart before the horse to talk about publishing before we talk about writing tips, for example, but it really isn't. So for example, if you're going to go the traditional route, you're going to be querying literary agents and publishing houses. Before you do that, though, you need to uh, showcase your writing to get the attention of the agents and, and publishers. And you're going to need to build up your social media following. Now, the exact numbers they like to see vary depending on the individual or the company. But having a solid following tells them, tell prospective agents and publishers two things. Number one, it tells them that you have an established fan base ready to purchase your book. And number two, it tells them that you're willing to put the time and effort in to marketing and promoting your book. So be on the safe side and begin building your social media following while you're still working on your manuscript. There are many pluses to going the traditional route, and some of them can be very important for new authors just starting out. To start, the publisher covers the cost of publishing your book, uh, which means it's the publisher who's taking the risk of putting mo money into a book that may or may not make back the value of the investment. Also, it's the publisher that, that, uh, that provides all the services and talent needed to get your, your manuscript to publish book. So they'll provide the editors, the formatters, the cover designers, all of the things that you need. And that means it leaves more time for the author to do things like writing their next book or working on marketing and promotion, um, things like things of that nature. The publisher will often do some marketing and promotion for your book, usually for about a month, unless, of course, the book takes off then they're usually willing to, to provide more time and money into uh, promoting the book. And also, it's easier to get your book into traditional uh, well, brick-and-mortar bookstores and libraries if, if you've gone through a traditional publisher. Because, of course, a traditional publisher will very likely have more contacts and more resources than you have. Along with these pros come a number of cons. So, for example, um, if your book is accepted by a publishing house, it could take up to 18 months for it to get ready to go on the bookshelves. And that might not seem like a big deal for some authors, but if you're writing on a time-sensitive subject or if your topic is relevant now, then that delay might make a big difference in sales. Also, both large and small publishing houses can end up with uh, more manuscripts than they can deal with at, at any time. That means your manuscript might end up on an editor slush pile for years before it even gets looked at. And a lot of publishing houses won't even look at your manuscript if you're submitting to more than one company at a time, because they don't want to put the time and effort into your manuscript if you're just going to turn around and say, sorry, I'm going to go with this other company. So it may take a long time to hear back from your publishing company. And if you get rejected, that means that you'll have to start all over again, the process all over again with another company. And also, if you do get rejected, it could be for reasons other than the quality of your writing. For example, how many manuscripts does a publisher have in your genre right now? And what genres are selling best in the marketplace right now? But you might never ever actually find out why your book was rejected. In one of the um, online writers groups I'm a part of, one of the other authors was telling, uh, posted a story about his experience with an editor of a publishing house. So when he was rejected, he asked the editor why he was rejected. And the response he got back was a not very polite, never ask that question again. So again, you might never know. Also, through traditional publishing, uh, authors tend to make between 8 and 25% in royalties. 
And the number, the exact number depends on the publisher, uh, the number of sales you have, and also the format of the book because ebooks, paperbacks, and hardcovers will all make different percentages. And in comparison, an indie author, a self-published author could end up keeping most, if not all, of the royalties. And we'll talk about that again in the next video. So here are some tips for authors looking into traditional publishing. First, make sure you're working on your uh, social media platform and your social media following while you're still working on your manuscript for fiction novels and for uh, while you're working on your book proposal for nonfiction. Also, make sure you're researching uh, and querying reputable literary agents who have experience in your genre. Also research publishing houses that you hope to submit to because they will often post on their websites, for example, what genres they're dealing with or what genres they're accepting right now and also when they're accepting submissions. Also, don't just accept a contract because it's offered to you. Make sure you read it and understand it and are willing to negotiate terms that you're comfortable with. And finally, don't give up. Even J.K. Rowling had numerous rejections by numerous publishing houses for her first Harry Potter novel before Small Press decided to take a chance on her. And now look where those books have gone. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions for me, please post them in the comment section below. And our next video will be on self-publishing and assisted self-publishing. So if you'd like to learn more, click the subscribe button. And if you click the notification button, you'll be informed when the next video is posted. Thank you and see you next time.